Hey YouTube friends. Today is going to be probably a pretty long video as long as my camera doesn't give out. Um, if it does, I'll recharge my camera and I'll splice it together and cut out the dead part. Today I'm going to teach you how to charge your tarot cards and I'm also going to talk and explain um, how to do a smudging, like of your environment, your house, or um, you know, any place that you just feel like you want to cleanse and get rid of all the negative energies, um, whether you've been going through a really difficult time in your life or you feel like you've almost got a black cloud that's been following you around, like you got a flat tire three days ago, uh, yesterday your washer quit working, you know, things like that. It just seems like everything repetitively is just negative, negative, negative. So that's a good time. Um, to do a smudging. But to begin with today, before we start discussing the smudging and how to do it and what you can use to do smudging with, I wanted to explain to everybody um, and show you different tarot decks that I have and explain to you what you need to do when you purchase, whether online or you go to a store and you bring your tarot deck home. I want to show you what you need to do to get it ready to use. So I'm going to go ahead and pan the camera down toward the table and zoom in so that when I'm showing you things you can see it instead of my face. And as you know, my viewers that have been viewing my videos for quite a while probably have picked up on I'm not a big fan of being on camera. So most of my videos I'll either crop it, you know, where you can see that I'm there, but I tend to do my videos basically focused on what I'm doing a video about and I don't think people tune in because they really want to see me, you know. I'm not a beauty queen or anything so I just tend to focus the camera for the most part on my workings or what I'm trying to show you or, to, or what I'm talking about. I'm not a big camera person or photo, I'm not photogenic either. So let me fix the camera and then we'll go ahead and we'll start on the tarot decks. Okay. All right. So I have a tarot deck, whoops, that is called Past Lives. I'll try to tilt this so that you can get a clear view of it. These are beautiful cards, by the way, and I got these off of Amazon. It comes with a book that explains all the meanings of the cards, and it goes in-depth, you know, into your reading of each card and what it means, and this is called Past Life Tarot Deck. I think these are absolutely gorgeous cards. Um, let's see if I can flip these over. This is what the tops of every card looks like. Let's see if I can. That's the tops of them. And then you flip it over. Let's see if I can get the glare off of it so you can see. The pictures are just, they're, they're gorgeous. I love this tarot deck. This is called High Priestess or Priest, Trees, Authority Figures, Father, Knighthood, Native American, Love Life, Spouse, let me fix these, Angels, Vows, Orphan, Health, Monk or Nun, Leaving or Travel, Atlantis, Male-Female, Medicine Man or Medicine Woman, Transportation, Karmic Relationship, Communal Living, this one is Asia, Lessons in Blessings, hold it over here, Wars and Battles, Imprisonment or Slavery, Finances, Galactic, Scribe or Writer, Food and Hunger, Persecution and Inquisition, Wisdom, Unrequited Love, Forgiveness, Biblical, The Arts, Phobias, Trust and Faith, Egypt, Oops. Farm. I get this one in almost every reading I do. 
Celtic. I also get that one in almost every reading I do for myself. Baby. Greco-Roman. Spirituality and religion. Mother. And then we're back to the High Priestess. And there's also one that ships. Oh, I wanted to show you this too. I hope this shows up in the camera. Do you see the gold reflecting? All of these cards, that's what's making this flashy. All the cards, let's see if I can hold it up. I want you guys to see this. These are beautiful. So let's see. See the gold? All these cards are gold plated or you know, gold leafed all the way around the entire deck. I mean, these are, they're just gorgeous. If I can keep it on camera. See that? Isn't that just beautiful? These, these are thick, heavyweight. It, I just love this deck. Okay. So put that one away. Remember, this was called Oracle Cards by Doreen Virtue and Brian L. Weiss, MD. And this is past life. You can get that on Amazon. Alright, the next one I have is more for the mystical fantasy lovers. It's called Journey into the Hidden Realm. And I won't go through all these cards because this deck is extremely thick. But here's the thick book that you get with, with this tarot deck. Journeys of the Hidden Realm. by Barbara Moore and Julia Jeffrey, I believe that says. I'm reading it backwards in the camera. This is how thick this book is. Whoops, to these tarot cards. And these tarot cards, let me hold them up here, are just, they're, they're stunning. I mean, the art in these are just amazing. I'm trying to, sh I won't show you the whole deck, but I just want to show you some of them. Oops. If I can get it on camera. Sorry, I know that's irritating. Doing the best I can here, guys. So, these are really, these are not gold edged or gold leafed. They're just white. And these aren't as heavy as the other ones. But the deck is a lot thicker, so you get a lot more cards. Look how thick this deck is. You get a ton of, of tarot cards in here. Okay, so that's that deck. This is called Gateway Oracle Cards, and there's 44 cards in this deck with a guidebook by Denise Lynn. Come here, Sasha. You went up here? No? Come here. Okay, well, let me, you went up here or not? I got my little puppy here. She wants up. She's missing a mama. Such a mama, baby, aren't ya? Oh, okay, thank you. This is Gateway. Let me hold it up here. Gateway. These are beautiful art. I got that on Amazon One. And... <clears throat> These are really thick, durable cards, but they are not uh, gold etched. But here's what some of the cards look like. And this is the other side where all the cards have this, you know, and then each card has its own symbolism. These are like hot air balloons. What are these? Cultivating prosperity. Um, that's pretty. Artwork on these cards are just breathtaking. Uh -huh. Receiving from angels. <clears throat> Whoop, that one's upside down, sorry. Renewing your life. Whoop. Savoring pleasure. Opening to love. So that's the artwork of those cards. Beautiful cards. Okay, the 
next one, now this is not to offend anybody because I believe in Jesus, but that doesn't mean that's, you know, I, I work with like guardian angels and, you know, like uh, archangels and I believe in Jesus and things of that nature. But if you don't, that's a-okay with me. You, you implement in your life what works for you. I'm pretty open-minded and I'm you know, not a very judgmental person. I mean, if you have your own beliefs, then go for it. If it works for you, it's the right decision for you. I don't believe it's anybody's right to belittle, degrade, brainwash, or, you know, insult or judge another person for their spiritual beliefs or practices. As long as what you believe in promotes love, forgiveness, understanding, you believe in whatever you want. So, this, let me hold this up. This is the tarot deck. It says, loving words from Jesus. Now, if you don't believe in Jesus or God and you believe in some other God or, you know, that's fine. Then you're not going to want this deck. But for the people that do, I want to show them this because these are beautiful. And they are gold-edged. This is what all the cards look like on one side. And then here are some pictures. Let's see if I can hold this back more. Here are some pictures. They're just, they're beautiful. And I don't, I'm going to hold this up. Like, here's one of the things that it says on here. If I can get the glare off. Nothing shall be impossible unto you, and it tells you where to look that up if you want to read more about it in the Bible. I mean, just gorgeous photos. The artwork on these cards are just breathtaking, I think. And like I said, these are all gold, gold leafed all the way around the deck. Very gorgeous deck. And this doesn't come with a book because it's pretty self explanatory. You just shuffle them, you know what I mean, when you hand your reading out to yourself or someone else. It, you just read what's on the card. I thought it would come with a book to it, but it didn't. I was kind of disappointed in that, but these are so beautiful that I was just like, eh, that's okay. I got enough tarot decks that have books that go in great depth. Okay, last one that I have that I own. A lot of my spiritual beliefs come from different venues, different belief systems, different cultures. So. I have some oriental practices that I've implemented into my belief in my my faith or my spirituality. I have Christian Christianity, some things from that, you know, that I feel are right on. None of us know for sure. None of us have all the answers, even if we want to pretend we do. The fact is, none of us do, and we'll all find out in the end if we had it right, had it mostly right, or if we were way off in left field. So, to each their own, because nobody has the answers until we cross over and then all of our questions will be answered, right? That's my belief. So, this one is, and, and I have a lot of spiritual Native American beliefs too. I think they were pretty right on. So, here is the, let me hold it up here, medicine cards. This is a tarot deck, and this is all geared around you know, animals and that sort of thing. Like your totem animal. And so I definitely had to get this deck. Alright, this is what the side is that all the cards have. And then when you turn it around, this deck, let's hold it back here so you can try to see, mouse, it has just, whoops, so you can see it, mouse, this one's backwards. You kind of gravita gravitate towards um, your totem is maybe the alligator. Or... Anyway, the whole deck's like that. Okay, so what you're going to need to do when you first get a tarot deck, and we're going to use Cast Life deck, just because that's my favorite tarot deck that I have, so that's what I'm using. Okay, so when you first get your deck, put the book aside, and what 
these, this is what I do, okay? First, I kind of go through card by card. You can either spread it in your hand like this if you don't want to go through each single card individually. It just depends on how much time you have and what mood you're in and if you want to go through the extra effort. But you can either do this where you're spreading the whole tarot deck out and you are going to touch it and you're going to light either white sage, which is right here, and I've showed you this, I think, maybe in another video, but if I haven't, it's white sage and sweet grass together. And you're going to burn that and on the table with a white candle, and you're going to basically bless your deck. You're going to concentrate, and you're going to pray to whatever God or you know belief system you have to empower this deck to remove all negativity because remember this is handled by tons of different people in the manufacturing company that made these plus all the people like if you bought it off Amazon think of all the warehouse and the people that have touched you know the outside of the box and you just want to remove everything and clear the slate of these cards and you want to embed it with your own energies and your own you know intent and anytime that you do a reading for someone else if that you know you have them draw cards and stuff when anyone touches your deck other than you you need to cleanse it when you're done with the reading and then you need to re-bless it and put your intentions back into it and make sure that you touch you can hold it to your chest like this you know and kind of hold the cards to your chest as you pray you want to you want to get your energies all over the these decks because they're yours and you want to per, you know personalize them with your energies and that's how um, you make your deck active for use after you purchase them okay let me put this back in the box and then we'll move on from here since it's pretty easy to get your deck active to use we'll go ahead and move from that <clears throat> on to doing um, a smudging. The most common for a smudging is white sage, which is right here. And I'll take some out and show you close up. Because some of you that are very beginners in this, and you've always wondered about it, but you don't, you don't know how to do it, you've never seen these things before. Oop. I'm getting there. I'm getting there, guys. This is white sage, and this is called loose white sage. White sage is prominently all over California. It grows wild along the roadsides and different areas. So they come in bundles, and bundles would be like, like this. This would be a bundle. They're tied together into a big fat bundle, and you can burn the ends of them and then just damp them out and put them out, you know. I prefer to use loose herbs. So again, let's see if this will focus. White sage. White sage is um, very earthy. You either hate the smell or you love it. There's kind of no in between. But this is the most universal herb that you can use in any smudging. And you can add white sage to any other of these things I'm going to be talking to you about and showing you that you can use for smudging. Okay, cedar. Right here. Cedar, this is a smudging wand. Cedar, of course, smells kind of piney, you know, cedarish. You know what pine and evergreen, it's got an evergreen smell to it. And this is probably one of the strongest smells besides pine which pine, you know, when you catch on fire, the pine needles, they spit, so you really don't want to use pine needles. But uh, cedar is all bundled up in this, and it smells wonderful, but it's kind of strong for some people. For me it isn't, but for some people it is. So you can use cedar. Um, cedar, it's clean and fresh smelling, kind of a pine aroma, like I told you. It gives you a boost of encouraging energy, kind of good to use when you're feeling down. Like I get depressed kind of in the winter because the winter's so long here in the Midwest. And I am more of a spring, summer, fall girl. 
So when I start feeling kind of down in the dumps and blue or sad or whatever, it's good to burn some cedar. White sage is cleansing like I told you and it's a real earthy smell. Okay, this is one of my favorites and I usually save this for really special occasions or when I'm going to be doing certain kind of workings. It's called sweet grass. It's got a sweet smell to it and it's a rope that's braided and you can either cut some of it off. Let's see if I can tell it. You can either cut the, you know, a little bit of the end off of what you want to use and put it loosely into a fire safe container or bowl or you can just hold on to the end of it and light it and carry the big rope around, but I don't do that. Um, like I said, I prefer to use things that are loose. Um, let me tell you some things about sweet grass. Where should I begin? Sweet grass, like I said, has a, a sweet smell to it. Um, it's uplifting, I'd say. Um, it attracts positive energy to come and re-enter your space. So like if you were having a lot of negativity, let's say, and I told you use the white sage because negativity, negative spirits, things of that nature, they don't like the smell of white sage. It, it almost offends them. And negative energy repels itself after you've blessed these ingredients yourself with your intention of only positive love, light. Then after you're done, you know, saging the whole house, then you're going and smudging your whole environment, you're going to want to light sweet grass. Sweet grass invites positive entities, positive uh, energy. That would be like your ancestors, your grandma, your grandpa, your dad, your mom, your sister, your brother, you know, any of the people that you loved here on the earth plane that have passed over into the other dimensions, if you will. Sweet grass is very fragrant and pleasing and calming to positive energy. Okay, that's that. And then we have Pelo Santo. That smells really good. If you like if you like the smell of burning wood, like a fire pit or oh it, it just smells so good. It's this is what it looks like. It's just little wood chunks and they're kinda hard to burn and keep lit. So you could always split this in half so it would be easier to keep it burning because when it's this fat and you're trying to keep it lit it's kind of hard to do so but that smells wonderful wonderful so I'd say that's a sweet kind of a sweet smell it's kind of a strong aroma and of course it smells like burning wood um, it raises your vibrational levels and it's also good for protection Oh, bless you, little Sashi. Oh, bless you, bless you. Hi, Belly, my puppy, Roonies. You gonna say hi to everybody? Let's see if I can get you on camera. Unless you're too wiggly. Oh, 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 you're getting too wiggly. You gotta hold still. You gonna say hi to everybody? Look at the camera. Mm. You gonna say hi to everybody? Sashi, Sashi. Mm. Are you looking at your sister? Is she jumping up here too? Say hi, everybody. Okay, go play with Sissy. Okay, so where did I leave off? Get that done. Um, other things that you can burn would be like juniper, which is a lighter aroma than cedar is. It's a more gentle um, evergreen smell. Um, that's good to burn like before you're gonna work on your intuition, you open yourself up physically. And I don't have juniper, so um, I'm going to tell you a couple others too that I don't currently have that I'm out of, but you could use what's called holy herb or holy weed. Um, it helps to be more in tune with spirit, holy herb slash holy weed. It's a little bit sticky in the bundle. Um, it's a little bit sweet. Uh, what else? Dragon's blood. I have dragon's blood incense sticks, which those would work, or cones that will also work to do a smudging. Um, dragon's blood, it makes your workings and your energies stronger and more potent. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think, make sure I don't forget anything. You can burn rosemary. 
for protection. Um, you can burn lavender. You can smudge with adding lavender um, to your white sage, to a little bit of cedar, a little bit of sweet grass. You can mix different uh, herbs to burn while you're doing your smudging. Mugwort, frankincense, all those are good to use during a smudging. And you can use cones or incense sticks, like I said, so all that works. So what you're going to need is some shells to burn. This is an abalone shell. See that? Let's see if I can get it in the light. It's gorgeous. Let's see if I can turn it. That's what this side looks like. That ain't so pretty as the other side, but this other side has got all kinds of gorgeous colors. Turquoise, purple, and you're going to put you're loose, crumble it up with your fingers, and you're gonna crumble it up and put it in your abalone shell. And then you can light it. And I don't typically leave the big, huge, fat stems in there. This is how big the stems are. I don't do that. I don't want a big flame shooting out of it when I'm walking around my house. And let's see, I'll try to light it. Just to show you, you can also use like a clamshell that you found at a river if you don't live by, you know, an ocean to find gorgeous shells. A clamshell will work too. So let's see if we can get a match going. And what else you're going to need is a feather. Now, I make smudge wands, that's what I call it. Well, not wands, I make smudge feathers to do your smudging with. And I use like peacock eyes, I use, you know, pheasant feather, I use all different kinds of feathers. No two of my smudging feather wands are the same. And you can go to my Facebook page, Kathy Soap Scents, and you can order these off there. These are beautiful, and they work really well. But if you don't have that, not a big deal. If you found a feather, let's say, on a nature walk, like I, feathers come to me constantly. Every time I go on walks or, you know, I always find feathers, no matter how small, how large. Here's another feather that I found on my property. I mean, I'm always finding feathers, so this would work too. Here are the incense sticks. This is frankincense. I love this smell. This is one of my favorite smells, frankincense sticks. So you could do a smudging with that if that's all you've got. This is Nag Champa. That's another one I absolutely love the smell of. A lot of my soap products, I have frankincense, fragrance oils. I have Nag Champa fragrance oil, leather uh, fragrance oil for smell. I just love these. And mirth. I mentioned that that's something else you can burn. And these are mirth incense sticks. <clears throat> okay, with that being said, let's go ahead and light a match. I wanted to make sure that I showed you all that. I want to pick up a couple things I dropped. Because my puppies will eat them if I don't. Oh, and I better show you these. These are charcoal blocks and you light them you get them at tobacco outlet stores they're charcoal um, blocks and you put them in your thing and you can set them on fire and then you can put your incense on top of it might help if I get it on camera huh so there's your charcoal right there and my sage is in here so you'd light that it would start on fire and then you can drop your herbs on top of it. I'm not going to use one of those tonight because they're kind of hard to get out once you light them. But, you know, they will keep your stuff burning for a long time. Okay, time to light this. Let's get over here so you can see. So we're going to light some sage. I'm just going to put the match in there and let it kind of work its way around and light the sage until the sage starts smoking really good. I 
but I blow on it really gently. You see all the smoke? That's what you want. So then what you're going to do is you always start with yourself before you begin your smudging. And you're going to, I'm going to put this camera back so you guys are going to be moving here for a minute. Okay, let's see if we can raise this so you can see what I'm doing. Ugh, let go camera, work with me, work with me. Okay. All right, I'm gonna stand back here and try and get on camera. So when you start, before you do a house smudging, you are gonna take your smudging feather and you're going to take the smoke and you're gonna put it up over you. Up over, up over. Up over. Now this shoulder. This arm. Over. And you're going to do this all the way down your body. You're going to take the smoke and you're going to put it up over your head and behind you. This is protecting yourself. And you're going to say, you know, whoever you believe in, if it's the Lord or whatever, because that's who I believe in. So I'm using that for this video. But if that's not who you believe in, that's cool with me. So we're going to do this and say, Lord, Please bless me and protect me and only allow positive light, love, and energy to surround me and to surround my environment. And you're just going to do this and you're going to keep smudging yourself all the way down. You're going to do this side of your body and you're going to do this side. Now because I don't have a cameraman, I can't you know, move the, the camera down so you can see, but you go all the way down to your feet on both sides of you, all the way down. Then you're gonna go in to the corners of your house and turn this so you can see what I'm doing. Let's see if we can get this going so that you can see. So you're gonna come like over here and you're gonna be putting the smoke in all the nooks and crannies and you're gonna go all the way down. Lord, please help me with this working in this smudging, remove all negativity, only allow positive light, love, and positive energies to enter into my space. And you're just going to do this throughout your whole house. You're going to go all around the corners. Oops, I keep getting out of camera. Sorry, guys. So you're going to go around all the corners, all the nooks and crannies, all of it. And you're just going to keep smudging, smudging, smudging. And then when you're done using the white sage, <clears throat> you're gonna use the sweet grass. Sweet grass allows good energy, good spirits, ancestors, guardian angels, whatever your belief system is, to re-enter your space after the negativity has been cleared out. So I hope this helps you guys and to get you started if you're new to this. Um, blessings to all of you, stay safe, and. I'll see you next video. Bye guys, thank you for joining me. So that's what this says, and you can pause it and copy it if it's not backwards.